These videos are offered on a pay-what-you-like basis. You can pay for the use of the videos at my website. There's a link to my website in the info box. The address is www.freelance-teacher.com slash videos.htm or you can just use the link in the info box. Thank you. We were, we were going to start by deciding uh, what the difference is between a transverse and a uh, longitudinal wave, right? Okay. So yeah, that, that's an important uh, idea. So first of all, we can understand like, what the difference is in words, and then I can try to paint you a mental picture so we can have an example of each of those. Mm -hmm. So um, in a transverse wave, uh, let's see, the oscillations are perpendicular to the direction of propagation of the wave. The oscillations are perpendicular to the direction of propagation of the wave. You can kind of then figure out what a longitudinal wave is. Which word do we have to change here to make this longitudinal? Oh, right. So for a longitudinal wave, the oscillations are parallel to the direction of the wave. So we should try to paint a mental picture so we can get a clearer idea of what the difference is. So a good thing to imagine when you're thinking about waves is a slinky. Have you ever seen a slinky? You know what a slinky is? Yeah. So um, first of all, let's say that I have a slinky in my hand. One end is in my hand, and the other end is attached to the wall over there. So it's one end is in my hand, the other end is in my hand, uh, attached to the wall. And then I start shaking my hand up and down. Well, what would happen if I start shaking my hand up and down? Well, you'll see a wave in the slinky now, there's a difference between the way the oscillations are moving and the way the wave is propagating. W which way would the wave propagate from where to where? If I started shaking my hand up and down, where would the wave be propagating from and where would it be going to? I'm not sure I know what you mean by propagating, but I think that you would see like up and down movement, but the wave would move like, you would see it move across. To the wall and away from the wall. Okay, that's right. That's exactly what it would uh, be. And so we have to figure out which of those is the oscillation and which is the propagation. So the key thing that you notice there is that the wave, even in a slinky, the wave is more complicated than you might think. There's two totally different types of motion. There's the up and down motion and there's the side to side motion. So the direction of propagation of the wave would be the movement towards the wall and away from the wall because you would be seeing, say, a wave crest propagating itself towards the wall. So the direction of propagation of the wave, you might call that which way the wave is moving. Okay. Which way the wave is moving. Uh, for example, so in our example of the slinky, the wave would be propagating towards the wall, and then it would reflect away from the wall. If we had, if we had say, a water wave, the water waves might be propagating towards the beach, say. Okay. You might also call that the direction of movement of the wave. Well, it's sort of like movement in the X direction, or T direction, or well, yeah, in this case, we would call, probably call it moving in the x direction because we usually use the x for horizontal. That's right. Uh, but on the other hand, if the, if the slinky was attached to the ceiling yeah. and I started moving it this way, then it would be propagating up. So we can't just say propagation means x. Uh, we have to just think about the specifics of the situation. Yeah. Now, um, the other thing, though, is what is the wave? The wave is an oscillation. And which way is it oscillating up and down? So that was the complicated thing, that there's two totally different types of motion. It's oscillating up and down, but it's propagating towards the wall. All right, so now we see the difference between, I, this is why I didn't want to use and say just the word movement here, because there's actually movement, there's two different types of movement. So we use propagation as a technical term for say which way, you might think of it as, say you looked at a crest, which way would the crest move? Well, the crest would move towards the wall. Well then, 
what type of wave is that slinky example that we just came up with, where it's attached to the wall and I shake my hand up and down? Um, would it be transverse or longitudinal? When you're moving it up and down? Yeah. So we have to remind ourselves which way are the oscillations moving and which way is the wave propagating, and then we can decide whether it's parallel or perpendicular. Okay, so I think it's transverse. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's right, we kind of reviewed those ideas. Mm -hmm. We said it was propagating horizontally towards the wall, but it would be oscillating vertically up and down, and those would be uh, perpendicular to each other. So that's what they mean by transverse. Longitudinal is a little bit more subtle, but those are common as well. And the neat thing is we can think of that as well with the slinky. Okay. So let's say again, the slinky is one end is in my hand and the other hand end, end is attached to the wall. Mm -hmm. And let's say maybe there was a, uh, a table here. So now I'm resting the slinky on the table. So it's just resting there. And now I'm not gonna shake my hand up and down. Instead, I'm gonna shove my hand towards the wall and then yank it away, towards the wall and then away from the wall. And you would again see a wave there. But instead of seeing the slinky moving up and down, what you would see is that you would see um, a part of the slinky that's condensed, yeah. and then another part of this uh, slinky that's rarefied, that's pulling away from each other. Um, so you would see it keep condensing and rarefying over and over. Mm -hmm. um, and if you just looked at one region of condensation, you would see that moving as well. So now we have to decide what's going to be the direction of propagation of this wave. When you say when you see one region, you mean like a point? Like you would also see a point moving? Yeah, you, you could focus on one particular, um, well, let's see, that, that, that's a little bit uh, tricky there, but um, again, the point is, if you look, if you take a snapshot of the slinky at one point, you would see that some of the regions are condensed, pulled towards each other, and some are rarefied, where the, the coils are far away from each other. Um, and then, if you wait, the condensed region is going to move someplace else, okay. and that's the direction of propagation of the wave. So which way would the wave be propagating if I'm shaking my hand like this? Um, in the, this left yeah, horizontally yeah. towards me and away. So for example, when I first started shaking my hand like this, only the close region of the slinky would show any changes. The slinky that's close to the wall would just be sitting there, but you would see a region of condensation moving towards right. the wall. And what direction is the slinky oscillating in? In the same direction. Yeah, that's because my hand is moving towards the wall and away from the wall. So what type of wave is that? That's the longitudinal. That's right. So longitudinal is maybe a little bit subtler than the transverse, but okay. it's totally a type of wave that you can and, make as well. And if you have something, a slinky or a spring hanging from above, like we said, in the y direction, that's, if it's like bouncing, has a weight on it, that's longitudinal. Uh, let's see, that's a good, yeah, that's a good point. So if there was a spring attached to the ceiling, I think you figured it out, and then you, um, you pulled down on the spring and you let go of it, mm -hmm. um, then they would start bouncing around, and you're right. Um, you would see, uh, the, so the oscillations would be up and down, and the wave would also be moving towards the ceiling and away from the ceiling, so that would be longitudinal, that's right. Whereas on the other hand, if it was attached to the ceiling and I started shaking my hand from side to side, that would give us something transverse. Okay. Okay, so th those are those uh, basic distinctions. Those are tested sometimes. Okay, and so then my only question about that is, um, what's the difference between when you have a graph or wave, whether it's in terms of y and, and t time, in terms of y and x, what's, is there a difference? y and x versus y and t? Okay, yeah, that's, that's a good question. Let's see, let's pause for a second before we get to that and ask, um, what are the key examples of this that you might see? For example, okay. say um, a sound wave. Do you know what type of wave a sound wave is? You have, has your class started talking about sound yet? Mm, no, we like did, we made a list of the different types of waves, but not how they broke down into these. But, and we did talk about um, not sound waves, but waves, sound made by strings. Right, like string right. Instruments. Okay, and any type of sound would be a wave. So that would be an example of making a sound wave. That's right. So first of all, can you, can you describe what is sound? What, what is a sound wave? What is it that's waving? What's oscillating? Maybe a little hard to articulate. Yeah. <laughs> so we can't see what's happening, but what's really happening is the air is oscillating. Okay. And to be more specific, um, it's oscillating, its pressure is oscillating. Okay. So if you look at just one region of air, it's oscillating from high pressure to low pressure to high pressure to low pressure to high pressure. Okay. Um, and those, that's what your ear picks up. It picks up the changes in air pressure. Um, and it's kind, you should think of it kind of like um, the slinky that was longitudinal, where um, sometimes the air molecules are close to each other and sometimes they're far from each other. 
Um, so that gives you that oscillation in pressure, uh, which means that sound waves are longitudinal. We can think of a sound wave as being a longitudinal wave. It's a lot like the slinky that was horizontal and attached to the wall, mm -hmm. just like um, sometimes the coils of the slinky are close and sometimes they're far, while sometimes the air is condensed and sometimes it's rarefied and that gives you oscillations in pressure. Uh, you were all, I think you were just mentioning uh, waves that you can create on a string as well, like in a musical instrument. What would those usually be, transverse or longitudinal? Mm -hmm. I think that they would work transverse. Yeah, like if you pluck a string, yeah. um, you might say pluck the string, and say the string would start moving up and down, and you would see the pulse move away from your finger. Yeah. Say. So that would be transverse. The most important type of transverse wave is light waves. But we don't need to worry about that too much because that's a second semester topic. Okay. Uh, but you definitely have to worry about sound, which is a, which is a longitudinal wave. Okay. All right.